But nuclear physicists like to play games with the god of entropy and death. They've been doing so for a long time, since Einstein discovered the fundamental equation of energy in the universe. And this is what Einstein found. E equals mc squared, which means the energy contained in any object is equal to its mass times the speed of light squared, an enormous number. March 1938, Hitler invades Austria. The Third Reich begins to flex its military muscle. Later that year, German scientists discover fission of the uranium nucleus, bringing the Third Reich one step closer to discovering the secret of the atomic bomb. Fear. In the fall of 1939, Dr. Albert Einstein wrote his now famous letter to President Roosevelt, explaining the urgency of work on uranium fission. Roosevelt, a man of action moved swiftly. An advisory committee on uranium was appointed. One scientist bet on the chances that the blast would ignite the atmosphere. He offered a side wager on whether it would destroy the entire world or only New Mexico. And then, just before dawn, at 5.29 on the morning of the 16th, the world changed forever. The bomb will not start a chain reaction in the water, converting it all to gas and letting all the ships on all the oceans drop down to the bottom. It will not blow out the bottom of the sea and let all the water run down the hole. It will not destroy gravity. I am not an atomic playboy. ついて赤ちゃんに行って赤ちゃんの工場船を作るんやってます。だからこう作られる工場船はよ補正要素が作られてるから、だから生まれた時からあの先天性のあの工場船が乗った形で生まれてるのよ。それもね、テレビなんか
yeah. the threat of nuclear war is uh, the most imminent uh, threat to human survival. It has been for a long time. It's the threat is increasing today. Now, there have been many incidents in which uh, we've come very close to a nuclear exchange, which could be essentially terminal as far as decent life is concerned. Probably the most extreme of these many cases was the Cuban Missile Crisis. At that point, uh, the world was extremely close to nuclear war. Finally, 28 were the dates when we literally looked down the gun barrel into nuclear war. Uh, Kennedy declared a quarantine, uh, naval quarantine, to block any ships coming to Cuba. Well, there were Russian ships on the way, and they were accompanied by uh, military vessels. U.S. destroyers uh, who were enforcing the quarantine started dropping depth bombs on Russian submarines. The Russian command system required that in order to fire nuclear tip missiles, three commanders to assent, and two did. Two agreed that since there's a war, nuclear war going on, we'll fire our nuclear tip torpedoes. The third countermanded the order, Vasily Akhipov. Uh, he refused to agree, so they did not fire torpedo the nuclear arms, and uh, there was no response, and the world was saved from a very likely nuclear war. One word away, though, it saved us from destruction, yeah. all of us. Mm. He should have gotten 50 Nobel Prizes. <laughs> yes. I mean, the thing brought us to the brink of war, are considered, you know, the most uh, brilliant elite uh, and so on. At the end of the war, most people wanted to stop. I did not. Because here was more knowledge. This had to be done. And as long as it had to be done, and I could contribute, I did, and was never sorry for having done it. I was the one person who put knowledge and the availability, the availability of knowledge above everything else. And I must say, it appears that that appealed to Truman and he made the right decision. At the end of World War II, the industry of nuclear weapons needed bigger accelerators. Soon physicists invented the synchrotron that revealed the final secrets of the fusion process needed to construct the hydrogen bomb. Berkeley, California, home of the Bevatron. The BEV stands for billions of electron volts, world's most powerful atom smasher. It's the beginning of the era of big science. Giant atom smashers are built to accelerate subatomic particles to fantastic speeds and smash them into other atoms. You have a grandstand seat here to one of the most momentous events in the history of science. In less than a minute, you will see the most powerful explosion ever witnessed by human eyes. The blast will come out of the horizon just about there. And this is the significance of the moment. This is the first full-scale test of a hydrogen device. If the reaction goes, we're in the thermonuclear era. Castle Bravo, with an explosive power of 15 megatons, stripped islands clean of vegetation and took the scientists by surprise. The huge explosion released large quantities of radioactive debris into the atmosphere. This resulted in the exposure and contamination of some servicemen, natives, and the crew of a Japanese fishing boat, which had gone unnoticed in the security zone around the blast. This incident pushed the dangers of fallout from nuclear weapons clearly into the public mind. ...of the United States, we present an address by Dwight D. Eisenhower, 
This is the farewell address for President Eisenhower, whose eight years as chief executive come to an end at noon Friday. Good evening, my fellow Americans. We now stand 10 years past the midpoint of a century that has witnessed four major wars among great nations. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. Now, this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. And I remember my first impression of disappointment. Is that all? 